Well, here we are at Easter Sunday. I love Resurrection Sunday. The joy, the celebration, the singing. <laughs> we can even sing this Resurrection Sunday here in Australia. Well, this weekend, we remind ourselves that the events we're remembering, the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, form the bedrock of our Christian faith. That's why around the world, Easter is one of the high points, if not the high point, of many church calendars. Easter reminds us that our faith today is anchored in events of the past and points towards a glorious future. That first Easter is the pivot around which all of history turns. As I said on Good Friday, the gospel we preach is an Easter-shaped gospel, cross and resurrection, Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. It's the cross of Jesus that deals with the past and it's the resurrection of Jesus that opens up a God-given future. And the invitation of the Gospel is to come and follow Jesus, the crucified and risen Saviour. We're an Easter-shaped church, a community of believers from all walks of life made possible because the cross breaks down all human barriers and the resurrection unites us together in the new life and purpose of Christ. And we live Easter-shaped lives, our Christian lives, marked with the cross and resurrection of Jesus, where His dying frees us from our past and His rising make a whole new future possible. On Friday, I likened the cross and resurrection of Jesus to bookends. Together they define the beginning and the end, the origin and the goal of our Easter-shaped lives. And like bookends, they hold between them everything God is doing and has always done to rescue, restore and rebuild. This weekend, we're unpacking this Easter-shaped life. On Good Friday, we looked at all the ways our Christian lives are cross-shaped. The lives we now live are based on a cross-shaped relationship. They enjoy a cross-shaped freedom and pursue a cross-shaped walk. And today, just as Jesus' death was followed by His rising from the dead, on Resurrection Sunday, we're diving into the resurrection-shaped life. On Resurrection Sunday, we remember that morning 2,000 years ago when Jesus' bewildered disciples found His empty tomb. At that moment, they had no idea what had happened, let alone what it meant. But over the ensuing days, Jesus appeared to them in the flesh on multiple occasions. And the realisation began to dawn that He had indeed risen, just as He and the Scriptures said He would. And that from now on, everything, everything would be different. And ever since then, the Christian church has preached Jesus, risen from the dead, convinced that His resurrection has changed everything. And just as our Christian lives are indelibly marked by Jesus' cross, so too they are marked by His resurrection. We live resurrection-shaped lives. But how has the resurrection changed everything? Well, firstly, we live in a resurrection-shaped age. During His earthly life, Jesus talked about two ages that divided all of history, this present evil age and the age to come. The first of these two ages described God's creation under the dominion and corruption of disobedience, sin and death, ruled by an evil power, the power of darkness. But Jesus proclaimed that this evil age's days were numbered and that its dark power would be overthrown. For a day was coming, indeed was already near, when the Kingdom of God would break in from heaven and the age to come would arrive. This would signal the dawn of new creation, an age of life and peace, ruled by the Messiah, God's anointed King, ruling in the power of God's Spirit. As it says in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the Gospel of the Kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the Kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. And Jesus backed up His preaching with signs and wonders and miracles, demonstrating that the power of God had indeed come to set free those who lived under the oppression of the devil and his darkness. When Jesus died unexpectedly on a Roman cross, His followers were left in disarray. This was not how it was meant to go. 
Jesus was meant to overthrow darkness, not be destroyed by it. But they didn't realise that this was the climactic moment the power of darkness was dealt its fatal blow. As the Apostle Paul would later go on to say, in Colossians 2 verse 15, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Jesus' atoning death on the cross signaled the beginning of the end for this present evil age. And His resurrection from the dead signaled the dawn of the age to come. You see, when Jesus rose from the dead, He became the first inhabitant of this new age, the first citizen of this new kingdom, the first of many more citizens to come. You and I, His church. This is what is going on when the New Testament describes Him as the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything He might have the supremacy. Colossians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. This new age of the kingdom has already begun and is continually making territory from the powers of darkness. And the truly remarkable thing is that you and I, as followers of Jesus, as those who are in Christ, as those who have the Spirit of God, have already entered into this new age. You may remember on Good Friday, we saw how we enjoy a cross-shaped freedom because we died with Christ. Well, the news just keeps getting better. We not only died with Him, we're raised up with Him. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. I hope you're catching this good news. We've already begun to live this resurrection age to come life. We already have, living inside us, among us, the Holy Spirit. He's the power of this new age. We already have the unending life, the world-changing peace and the unstoppable joy of this age burning within us. What age? The resurrection age. Now the fullness of that new age is still yet to come. It came into existence at Jesus' resurrection and will come to its fullness at His return and our resurrection. But until then, we already live in it. One foot, as it were, in this world and one foot in the world to come. And while we wait, we learn, we grow, we build. As you might have heard me say at some point or somewhere, this life is training for raining. I've heard some preachers preach sermons about that. We are training for raining in this current world we live in. We live with a God-given authority, with resurrection power pulsating through us. Secondly, we live in resurrection shaped power. Let's talk about that power. Listen to this amazing passage in Ephesians, where Paul prays, Ephesians 1, 18 to 21, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe. And what kind of power is it? It's resurrection power. It's age to come power. According to the working of His mighty power, the Scripture goes on, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. That's the power that is at work in you and I. Power that brings dead things to life, that raises lowly things up to rule and reign in heavenly places. Power that gives authority over the forces of darkness. Power that goes on forever. It's this power we are believing will rescue, restore and rebuild this year. Can I hear an Amen. And like Paul, my prayer for you this Easter is that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you might know His incredible resurrection power in you, at work in you and in your world. My prayer for us is that across the life of Hillsong Church, all around the globe, we will know and see His resurrection power at work, so that the rebuilding we're believing to see will be fueled not just with our strength, but with truly supernatural power, Resurrection power. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Amen. That's the kind of rebuilding I'm believing for.
So this year, when you find yourself hemmed in by the challenges, limitations, and the opposition of this world and the powers of darkness, remember, you are not subject to the powers of this age, but the power of the age to come. You have resurrection power living inside of you. Let's believe together that our lives and our church will be shaped by this resurrection power. Number three, we live with resurrection shaped hope. This last year, as we all saw, our world was plunged into the tragedy of this coronavirus pandemic. We couldn't have believed 2020 and now the early parts of 2021. To date, there've been over 120 million infections and over two and a half million deaths. The scale of it's hard to comprehend. And there are people in our church around the world, various campuses and locations around the world who have been caught up in the tragedy personally. Some have lost their lives. Others have lost loved ones. Some are dealing with the ongoing health challenges of having had the virus. Others have been rocked economically. We've all been confronted with the challenges of lockdown and isolation. But this isn't the first time something like this has hit our world. And it won't be the last. History is littered with the devastation and death that comes from war or disasters, plagues, droughts and famines, etc. The Bible tells us that creation has been subject to futility and is in bondage to corruption. Romans 8, 21. Romans is so powerful. It's in times like these, perhaps, that the unique message of Easter can be seen most clearly. The resurrection of Jesus provides a hope that truly is the answer to the world and its needs, an answer no other religion or political ideology can match. Death, in all its forms, is the great tyranny. From the death of dreams, the death of relationships, sickness and old age leading to physical death, ours and the ones we love, mortality, the transitory nature and frailty of life and the certainty of death afflicts everyone and everything. The fear of death is a great fear and we'll do all we can to deny it, avoid it, delay it, keep it out of view. But through things like a pandemic, death always manages to demand our attention. But here's the thing, death has God's attention too. Hebrews chapter two, verses 14 and 15, inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, He Himself likewise shared in the same, that through death He might destroy Him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The resurrection of Jesus tells us that death has been defeated. The great enemy of humanity, of all creation, has been thrown down. And Jesus' resurrection is a promise guaranteeing our own. That's right, our own resurrection. And our life in the life and power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit which raised Him from the dead, is a foretaste ahead of time to that great day when, like it says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? In the meantime, we live resurrection-shaped lives. We already live in a resurrection-shaped age. We rescue, restore, and rebuild with resurrection-shaped power. We are filled with resurrection-shaped hope. We overflow with resurrection-shaped joy. So Easter truly is the foundation for Christianity. Without it, Christianity has nothing to offer but ancient stories, moral rules and regulations, and empty religion. But with the Easter story, it's the answer to the world. It has the power to change lives and transform societies. Because through Easter, God invades the world He loves with cross-shaped deliverance from sin in the past and with resurrection-shaped life for both now and the future. Everything about our Christian faith and our Christian lives is Easter shaped. Hillsong Church, Bobby and I love you. 
And our prayer for you this Easter is that you and your family would truly enjoy everything God has for you and has done for you. Because what is Easter about? If it's not about all that God has done and is doing through the cross and the resurrection of Jesus to rescue, restore and rebuild. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter.